I grew up, I didn't grow up actually, I was born in Nova Scotia, Canada, um, which has a really, really cool history. It actually has the oldest black community in Canada. A lot of people don't know that. I only spent a few years though there. I've been back recently, but I spent the majority of my uh, childhood in Montreal. Um, which also has a lot of culture and a lot of music and a lot of great uh, jazz groups. One in particular was, uh, uh, well, there's many, but one was uh, Yuzeb, which uh, actually has one of my favorite bass players in it, Alan Caron. So we were very fusion oriented. So that was a great place to grow up because some of the bass players were just hot. A lot of fretless players. I noticed a big difference uh, in growing up because when I came to the States a lot later in my life, um, I noticed that there wasn't as much fretless bass playing, which I actually truly loved and think it's a really emotional uh, instrument because you can do anything you want with your fingers and that really has the um, has, has your vibe and sensuality in your finger tone, in your in, in your fingertips. So when I came to the states, um, I felt I had a, a just a little bit uh, different different flavor, and I thought that was a great thing, and still do because it allowed me once I once I came here and saw the the other techniques and more of the uh, more of the slapping and all this stuff that was going on, it allowed me to work on and really concentrate on the styles and the things stylistically that I wasn't as good at. So I think it, it helped me to um, become a little bit more well-rounded as a player, and I still continue to work on it all the time. I had some, um, I had some really great friends and, and, and business partners um, in Montreal. There seemed to be a lot of um, black Americans who would come to Canada from the States and just chill out a little bit since it was a little bit a little bit more relaxed let's say not to uh, to be politically correct and not insult anybody <laughs> but of course they would come with amazing music I remember one of my first forays in something that I really played and wore the tapes out and the records out was uh, a lot of Graham Central Station which I could never find uh, on a record in the town I was in. I had a friend of mine who had a lot of those and I think that's probably when I got first introduced to um, the stuff that, that Larry was doing and um, the technique that he was using um, and other bass players were using like like top bottom was really what, what I call it, my, my first foray into that that kind of um, style. And I used to wear those records out and, and like I said, the tapes would be coming out and broken. I would have to fix them, tape them back together, get stuck in the machine, going back and forth because we didn't have Pro Tools then. I couldn't slow anything down. You had to just, those are really the days when you had to just listen to something over and over and over. And it was so beneficial, I think, because not only do you learn the part, you hope because you're training your ears at the same time, but the feel gets embedded into your soul, and that's really that's really what it's about. We think it's a bit of a shame today now that um, there's not a lot of funding uh, for school music programs and so on and so forth. Because I think that school music programs, I can certainly say for myself, probably saved me, kept me out of a lot of trouble when I was younger, because all I wanted to do was be in the band and play with the band. But we think it's uh, definitely a shame that um, there's not that much music for um, kids to do with the funding anymore.